good. Hey everybody, we are at Momento Coffee and she has got a Pembroke Welch Corgi Terrier that we get to meet today. We're gonna hear to meet Nina, the owner, and talk coffee. So come on in, you guys. Let's get started. Yes, I hear somebody. Oh, Hi! Well, hello! <laughs> it's okay. Take your hat off. Come here. It's hat. All right. And glasses. And beards. Are you Nina? Yes. Hi. Hi. So nice to meet you. Hi. This is Jack. Can I pet him? Oh, yeah. Good boy. It's okay. It's okay. This thing scares yeah. him. He's afraid. Yeah. <laughs> look. See, look. It's okay. See? Come here. You want treats? Would that make you feel better? Oh, you're scared. Aww. He's scared. I don't want that okay, camera thing. Okay, he's doing it. That's alright. What's up, Jack? Bring the Jax. Yeah. Jax. So this is all themed after. Oh, look at this. So, the cafe. Themed after Jax. Come here. East Garden. Oh. Yeah, Make yeah. sure. Make sure everything's okay. All right, you want treats? Come here, Jess. Come here, Jess. Hey everyone, we've got a special treat today because I found a local coffee roastery. What do you, is that what you call it? Yes. Mrs. Nina Volkovich. Yep, perfect. Perfect. I had to had to practice that a couple <laughs> times, but I have a last name of Shinsky, starts with a T, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit harder to. So anyway, you guys, we are at uh, we are at Momento coffee here in Chandler, Arizona. And is this a family business? It is. My dad and I own the company and then my mom makes all the desserts Ooh. and everything is made here at the facility. So okay. everything's always fresh, made for order. Everything's always going to be bitterness free, low acidity and smooth. Awesome. Awesome. So we're here to taste coffee, get a little bit of a tour. What Harry? Why coffee? What made you guys Why coffee? coffee? Yeah. So we're actually originally from Montenegro, ex Yugoslavia, right. and we moved here when I was nine. My grandpa used to roast in the garage and it was very small, but my dad has an engineering brain, so he started working on his own things when I was little. He used to own nightclubs and restaurants, mm -hmm. and then he designed, did all the prototypes, designed all our roasting equipment, all our packaging equipment, you Ooh. name it, Ooh. which is why unfortunately I can't have the process be filmed. It's a secret and we can't watch it be done because of proprietary, but she's gonna tell us a little bit about it. So. This little place is absolutely beautiful. The floor is even, Nina did the floor that you yep. guys just saw. My uncle, my dad and I did the floor. That looks like my cup of coffee right there. Look at that. When I pour cream that in cool? my coffee, that's the color I want. I mean, I could sit and look at this all day long. It's just the depth through it, the tones and the coloration is absolutely phenomenal. Just explain your beautiful homemade counter. Yeah, with so we made the homemade counter and I wanted it to match the colors of our place here. And this is the Honduras Finca, which is one of the most popular beans that we sell out of here. And then we just added some color in it. She has been keto. Yes, for three years now. For three years now. And explain this delicious looking uh, summer menu. So all of the items over here are keto friendly. The bourbon pecan torts and the salted caramel 
are actually made with extracts. They have zero calories and zero sugar. It's not your typical drinks. So everything is made from extracts so you can taste it, but you don't get the extra calories. They, you can also put foam on top with different milks, but since it's not keto friendly, right. you don't have to do it and you're going to get an amazing drink without the added sugar. When you guys go through Starbucks, those are American drinks. Those are things that have been commercialized. It's like getting Chinese food here and going over to China and actually sitting down and having a Chinese meal. Totally different story. Same thing with your coffees that you guys have. If you ever go into France, and you go to a, uh, a salon and you ask for a French manicure, there, you're not gonna get the painted white tip with the clear coating. It's something uniquely different. And this is old world, old school, original espresso. And show the different ways and what each one is. And then it shows the measurement in the cup. Espresso is like this and cappuccino is like this. So if you're getting an espresso ristretto, it's what we like to call a little shot of death. Mm -hmm. And then if you're getting espresso lungo, it's to about here. Cappuccino is four ounces with froth milk on top. And then a latte is eight ounces, a shot of espresso lungo, very extended. And then you pour milk and foam on top. This is the way when you go to Europe or in any of the old country areas, that's what you are getting. Yes. You're not getting these star, unless you walk into a Starbucks because they're everywhere now. It's a totally different drink. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. And especially with the macchiatos. So it's going to be a shot of espresso, lungo, with some foam on top. That's a macchiato, the traditional way. Yeah, there you go. And I love this. Hugs in a mug, look at these. Don't know what to get. Somebody give them a hug and a mug. Since everything is themed after my puppy, my corgi, Jackson here, I made uh, some, you know, nice cute mugs. Right. With the little paw. Yes. And then this guy is two ounces. It will make you a whole pot of coffee. Oh, nice. Wow. If you're in here relaxing and, and you're enjoying your lovely coffee and you hear somebody giggling in the bathroom, I'm gonna share with you guys why. She says that the same one is in the men's yes. as well as the women. Come check this out, you guys. Check out the picture. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, These cool. are good too, even the coffee. You get reading material on the wall, turn around. Plant, which is really unique. Are they part of the jazz? They're not part of the jasmine family it's like tea is. No. Uh, chameleon yeah. family. But I love everything, the color is beautiful. You guys, we just got a tour of the facility and it, it's behind the scenes and it's proprietary, but she's got some really unique things that they do with their coffee that other uh, roasters do not do, especially the large commercial varieties of them. And her father is an engineer and he designed all of their equipment and some of the redundancies and things that they do that other roasters don't do in order to get a perfectly roasted, delicious bean every time. And some of the things that she shared with us, she is gonna talk about, she said she could do that. Um, and I want her to show, she's got these three cups right here and I want her to explain these for you guys because it's it's fascinating to me and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, I never knew that. Yeah. So There's definitely a lot to know. So this is what green coffee looks like before it is roasted. And so those guys expend about two to three times in size, and that's exactly how you sear coffee later. So in order for us to get this in burlap bags, which is how they come, there's a whole process. So once the coffee's ready, it turns red. It has an outer layer that it's red. It looks kind of like a berry. They shed their, uh, they remove their skin layer by layer. Then they either put it on concrete slabs or dirt to dry it and then it's raked. So you get lots of fillers such as dust, rock, sticks, and metal, which obviously you don't want. And our coffee goes through nine filtration systems. And instead of how many? What's instead the normal? Of usually one to two tops. That all came out from removing it and filtering it mm -hmm. nine times. And I have opened up a bag of coffee and had it smell like earth, mold, mm -hmm. earthy. And it's probably because of the filtration yes. that they did not do. And a lot <laughs> of the coffee. time, unfortunately, they don't know how to roast properly. They destroy the nucleus of the bean. So essentially, 
your coffee turns into ash. If you put any pressure on, on the bean, mm -hmm. it cracks. So with us, you have to really put pressure on that bean for it to crack, right? Mm -hmm. And the amazing thing that my dad designed, and I'm obsessed with it, is when you're roasting coffee, remember me telling you it expands two to three times in size? Right. Now are these, do mm -hmm. these have this on there? Yes, or they do. Okay. So that's the so outer layer. Little this little bean is. They're tiny. Yeah. Right? Compared to the dark roasted mm -hmm. finished product. Exactly. So what we do is we remove the chaffs, otherwise known as coffee skin, and they're responsible for about 20 to 30 percent of a filler. Most people leave that in your coffee because money, of course. It's used as a filler. That way when you're buying, let's say, a pound of coffee, you're getting around 13 ounces. You're not getting actually pure coffee. So with us, you don't have to use as much coffee for your cup. Because you're taking that exactly. off. Exactly, it is actually pure. And another thing I asked her, they're very green, um, very um, thrifty. And one of the things is, as I said, man, this would make great mulch. And she said, exactly. Yeah, so we actually donate this to any local gardeners that wanna come by, we donate it. It makes great mulch and compost and everything. And we have a lot of it. So please call us ahead of time. You can bring a tote, you can bring a garbage bag, anything you like, and we'll fill it up for you. Because if you guys know, coffee grounds and eggshells are wonderful for a garden. Matter of fact, in, when we were in Washington State, we would save our coffee grounds and we would save our um, eggshells, get them dried out, and then put them in my rose garden. Roses loved it. So I bet you this is the same thing. Yes, yeah. So and you keep that bugs away. Oh, there you go. Keep the bugs away yeah. too. Coffee, uh, grounds when you mix it in your soil bugs do not like the taste so oh it works perfect so that's great for organic now you mm -hmm. also have organic yes we are certified organic and we go through a certifier and they're called where food comes from so it's a really good company and you have to take organic processes very seriously in order to be able to get that certificate so anything with us that has a USDA label on it is actually certified organic and you also use small family-owned businesses yes. that are sustainable. Explain that mm -hmm. a little bit too. So that's also why we have that here. I don't know if you can see it. But our coffee is from the farm to the bag, meaning we only buy from ethically sourced, fair trade, family-owned lots because we want to make sure the coffee we purchase is benefiting the families and the places where it's coming from. And we're not just buying from big multi-million dollar lots and getting coffee at a cheaper price. We don't want that. We want to make sure that we're actually benefiting the people behind it and that it's coming from the right place and that the quality of coffee is there. So everything we buy has amazing quality and it's going to be the same today and 10 years from now because we buy from people that are sustainable and that can actually keep up with the demand that we need. Another neat thing is, besides coffee, is they do teas too, but today is coffee and she said they actually have about 40 different blends. Yes. Uh, they have a website. We'll share the website with everybody. And on the website, you have about 12 yes. different blends that more. you guys can get, as well as they do do the K-Cups. Yes. She is actually working on doing something special with the K-Cups so that they're going to be biodegradable. That is not in place yet, mm -hmm. but she is working on it because they're always thinking green. They're thinking sustainable. They're thinking reusable. Uh, they're thinking about the planet when they do their coffee. Can you share with me, I don't know if it's proprietary or not, why do K-Cups have that bubble on the top? So the reason that K-Cups have that bubble on top is because the coffee is full of acidity. So coffee is acidic in nature, just like you know a tomato would mm -hmm. be and you know what you have to do with it to get it non acidic. Well coffee has its own process and a lot of people tend to skip that process and it doesn't allow it to get rid of all those gases. So they end up just being full of acidity. So when you pack it, what ends up happening is the gas tries to come out of the cake up, but it can't. It's already packed in there, it's ground. It can't do anything in that form. And it ends up having that bubble and that's why you hear the pop when you put it in there. So all that stuff contributes to us also is down the line because it's just full of acidity. And coffee should not be bitter nor acidic 
it should always be smooth. And even when you're drinking it cold or you let it cool down, if you've ever had that sip and you're like, oh, why is this bitter? That equals it being processed incorrectly. So. so I thought that was fascinating because one of my pet peeves with coffee is, and one of the things that Harry does on his coffee break time is he always tastes the coffee black. Mm -hmm. because we don't want that acid taste. We don't want the bitterness to it. Exactly. I don't want the burnt taste to it either. Mm -hmm. And I think that people become accustomed to that because they don't know what a good blend of coffee really tastes like. Exactly. And I think once they taste it, it's like, wow, this is, this is so unique and so mm -hmm. good. And it's because of the way it's processed. It's not, mm -hmm it's a coffee bean, but it's the way you've processed it to take out that and allow the bean to settle mm -hmm. uh, properly, mm -hmm. be roasted totally incorrectly mm -hmm. so that you only get that mild, deep, roasted, delicious, nutty mm -hmm. taste from every single bean that's exactly. in your bag. So I thought that was really Thank unique you. too. Ex mm -hmm. Did you show them that? Yes. Yes. Did we? Okay, I wanted yeah. to make sure we went over that. And the most important thing too is you have to know how to buy green beans. You have to know whether they're good quality, whether they're diseased, and beans can also carry rust and they can have small microscopic wormholes. So you really have to know what you're doing because if you don't know how to buy green coffee, everything else goes south. So. My dad has been doing this for over 30 years and so I'm fortunate that I'm doing something that we both have so much passion and love for and that I have an expert to teach me everything. Um, is there anything you'd like to tell us about your place? Tell us your hours and the time besides your website. Maybe we want to tell them how to get to your website. And so our address is 4114 West Saturn Way, Chandler, Arizona 85226. And the website is momentocoffee.com and we can link everything. We'll, we'll put a link yeah. below and right. she's going to give you guys a 10% discount. We're going to have that link below with the Loving It on Keto code mm -hmm. so that you guys can go and try out her coffee because I'm very excited because I get to try mm -hmm. some next. Yes, indeed. And if you're a tea person, they have teas as well. And I'm sure they have paid as close attention to their tea and tea leaves and sourcing as they have with our coffee. So Absolutely. maybe we can do a tea segment some other time and, and go in deep into teas because in the winter time, I love tea. I'm a tea, They're perfect, yes. tea person. Well, yeah, you so, a lot of the people watching. Our teas, tea people, yeah. so mm -hmm. we maybe we can do that. But mm -hmm. you guys, I'm all for the taste test. How about you? Come back in the next segment and we'll be doing some taste testing. We have what brand is, which so one is this? This is the Guatemalan Finca. It's a medium roast and it's a micro lot, meaning it comes from a small family owned lot. So it's medium. Oh, really? It's, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful color. I love the color. Do the smell. Oh, now see, this is the aroma yeah. that I could just right. sit. It's like that aromatherapy for me. It is. Let me get to meet my dad. There he is. Oh. Yes. Oh, this is really good. No, no bitterness, no, no acidic. I like this. Thank you. And it takes your palate about four to five sips to get the true taste. Takes your tongue a little bit of time to get the full taste profiles. Mm. This would be so good as iced coffee. Just, just, mm -hmm. it almost has a little caramel <laughs> to me in the back end of it. I'm mm -hmm. liking this one. Yeah. So. Yes, that's my dad. Hey, dad. Hey, dad. <laughs> Yeah. No, Spanish. So he speaks Serbian. Okay, that's fine. He also speaks English. That's fine. Um, this is delicious. I love I this. Like it. And they can can they get this? Kind of fancy, isn't it? Yeah, you can get the Guatemalan on the website. You can get it ground any style size you like. You just put it in. Okay. So they customize that for okay. everybody too. Mm -hmm. You guys. So that is this is delicious. I mean, that was like absolutely delicious. That was great. Thank you. Yeah, I like mm -hmm. that. Take a lot of pride in it. So, mm. and then I will show you the Mexican Altura. For someone that you have in your family that doesn't like coffee, that always complains about it, upsetting their stomach, it's too acidic, it's too burnt, it's too this, it's too that. This is the kind of coffee you want to serve them because I'm serious, it was absolutely delicious. And even oh, yeah. what's left on the back end of my tongue right now, is deliciousness. 
I'm just saying. Now, this no. one's the darker, mm -hmm. a little darker. Yes. And we're going like wine. You start with the whites, you work up your way up to the reds, into the ports. That's what we're doing. So this one is the Mexican Altura. Yes, Mexican Altura. Okay. So the Mexican Altura is high altitude grown coffee. And now anything that's grown at a high altitude is 16,000 feet above sea level. Wow. And it actually grows way slower. It matures way slower, but it gives it a smoother taste. Okay. okay and one thing we oh, forgot wow. to do that is very important is we did not take oh, a swig of water. Thank you. Yeah, Thank course. you. Cleanse your palate just like you do with fine wine. Fine coffee, you want to cleanse your palate. Now see, this has a quite different Different smell. aroma. Mm -hmm. It really does. It does. Totally different, taste. different taste. Yep, yeah. totally different taste. Totally different taste. Totally. Hello, Hi. how are you? Good, you are the you are the brains behind this. Oh. I guess. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Ooh, this is good. See, very different too, mm -hmm. and you can enjoy it. It is even though it's a darker roast. It's a darker roast. Wow, how can I describe it? It's mellower, but it's richer, richer. Mm -hmm. than the other That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. and it's it's got more heft to the taste but mm -hmm. it's not bitter at all oh, it's really good and the one thing I found mm -hmm. out ever since I've been working with my dad for the last 11 years mm -hmm. is people associate bitterness with strength of coffee yes and I'm like no 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 it's not supposed to be bitter and even if it's a dark roast it shouldn't be bitter it can have smokiness to it, absolutely, but no bitterness. And actually, the lighter you go, the more caffeine you have. Oh, I did not yes. know that. So, so like blonde you know, roast, yes. that, that they call blonde yes. roast, is heavier have, caffeine? Yes, because uh, wow. also, you know, when you get a steak and you get it very well done, it has less juice. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same thing. You're burning the caffeine off. So the darker you go, the bolder it will taste, but less caffeine it will have. So you did you hear that, you all? Yeah, take that in. Take mm -hmm. that in. And here's another crazy thing for you with the decaf. We only do Swiss water process decaf. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Thank I, that you. That was going to be a big question. No formaldehyde. Or no formaldehyde. Good thing you know that because most people don't. So we purchase it from Germany. That's where it comes from. And they use high water pressure, a very proprietary process to yeah. remove it all. And so that's what we do. No formaldehyde. And you get 99.9% caffeine free. You mean it's... So. Not like my Folgers? Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that yeah, is right? awesome to know too. So it's even done, um, uh, I want to say green. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's yes. done because by the time it organically, comes to us, really, yes. because it's water mm -hmm. and it's probably a uh, special spring water or it's filtered water and all mm -hmm. of those good things. Because as, did you guys know mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. most of your decaf coffee has formaldehyde? Yeah, that's right. It's been processed and you can't get it all out of the coffee. That's why. That's what I meant by. I mean, yes. it's not like my Folgers, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's crazy. The instant yeah. man. Oh, it's really and the good things to know about coffee is. Never put it in your fridge or freezer. You right. destroy it. Keep it in your pantry and keep it out of direct sunlight. Cold, heat, and air are the number one enemies to coffee. And when you brew it, use purified or distilled water only. No tap water. You're going to destroy your machine and the calcium is just going to. Especially yeah. in Arizona, the calcium oh. is horrid here. Now, question about that. Mm -hmm. The bags they come in, should we put them in a coffee uh, canister? So these are fine. You can keep them in these. Nothing is going to air out and they're meant, they're meant for the coffee. But if you feel more comfortable, you can also put them in anywhere where you like to store your coffee. And I like to, I put mine all in these big glass sealed. Yeah. They have a Because I have a mess them. of them, yeah. right? I have a bunch all lined up. Yes, yeah. So I tend to do that because, well, I don't know. Maybe but did you hear that? Kind of like do to, not like refrigerate your coffee. Right. The, the natural oils in the beans mm -hmm. and the coffee is going to turn, it's going to get hard. It's, yeah. it's just Basically, not going to they just, taste well. Um, you mean it leaches out of the Yes, it it's, leaches it's, out, essentially right? it's just all gone. And then Alex has the espressos. Okay. So, I'll do that. so I was I was told once I forget who it was that if you put it in the refrigerator and you bring it out, you can introduce molds and stuff. Yes, other things that too. I'm sure you can because the, you're probably the, opening up the pores. Everything has pores, pores and it probably oxidizes.
So, question for you. Mm -hmm. Do we shoot this or do we sip it? So, what is the correct way? So a lot of people shoot them, but then I have to make you a ristretto. I would not shoot this. I would enjoy it. Okay. So you get everything. Okay. So our espresso is made with six different kinds of beans. That's Ooh. what makes espresso, espresso. Okay. So anyone that's putting anything else that is an espresso in their machine and that is oily, you destroy your espresso machine. So oh, wow. mm. espresso is just meant for espresso. You can't put anything else in it and then get espresso. Is all espresso always a six bean? So that's derivative? our that's okay. our recipe. But of course, I can't tell you what mm, kind of course of rice, Yes, but most people know. It just depends on what they do. But we make ours the traditional way, and when you taste it, you're going to see it's not going to be like other espressos. It's not going to have bitterness. You're going to have good bold flavors. Okay, but you're not going to make a Based when you try it. Not cringe it. Yes. So, did you hear that, you all? When you have an espresso machine, you need to use only espresso coffee beans in it because of the oil factor to it. You can ruin your espresso machine. Mm -hmm. So, get a coffee machine for your coffee. Percolators is the best way to enjoy coffee, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. A percolator does the best job of yes. coffee, but if you drink it any other way, that's fine. But an espresso machine should be used for espresso beans. Yeah, I'm learning all this good oh, it's stuff. Oh, great. It's great, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So She's going to take over my show pretty soon. No, I'm not. I'm just excited. So, explain the little spoon. So oh, usually okay. people like to eat the crema, like they just kind of right, do that top. sometimes, okay. yes. or. Usually when you do mm. a macchiato or you do, you know, just macchiatos and you eat the foam and you mix it first and it's also there when people want to use sugar. I want to try That's the foam. I want to see what yeah. you just said. I will. Can we get a macchiato a please, Alex? Wait a minute. Yes. Yes. Do you want it in a small cup? Yeah. Small cup, please. Would you like a macchiato? Yes, I would so like one. So two macchiatos, please. I'm going to be up till 1 a.m., but That's I want That's fine. Well, we are in here every night anyway. Yes, so we what's are. The yep. but let's <laughs> try this. I'm excited. Yeah, okay. Let's smell this. Mmm, that mm. Oh wow! That just that's really has right? nice. Oh yeah. Wow. That's why we serve it like this. I want you to have the actual. Take a whiff. See what I'm talking about. Right, you guys, yes. Yeah. This is another aroma coffee aroma therapy oh. moment where you Man. take it as it's just cooling down to get it to where you can sip it, not burn your mouth. You're gonna want to just sit here and smell this because this is Ooh. heaven. That is. Man, taste so Yeah, that's that something. is really good because I, I've shunned away from having espresso shots mm -hmm. because of the bitter, because yeah. of the burnt, bitter, burnt, yeah, and but all that's of those things. Not, this is not mm -hmm. bitter or burnt. To be. Bitter oh. or burnt. Mm -hmm. It's good. So that's you want an espresso machine it. now, dear? Yeah. Yes, I was just gonna, I was gonna bring that up to you. He's, he's got this glow in later. his eyes. He's, he's looking deep into the pool <laughs> of the espresso <laughs> as he is. I like that. Mm -hmm. So people put cream and... Uh, yeah. So traditionally you just drink it black, but right, right. for the macchiato I can make it, I have milk substitutes, we do oat milk here and you can put uh, some oat milk on top, just a spoon of foam essentially. Yeah. It's a spotted coffee, that's what a macchiato is. Oh really? A spotted espresso essentially. Oh, okay. This, this tastes like the kind of coffee you drink. They love the espresso. Is, it's you delicious. Go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Nina's mother makes of their desserts mm. that are here and it's it's Friday and they're closed on the weekend so they don't have very many but the stuff I have seen over there looks like heaven to me. Yeah. So I mean you need to tell say, gotta, mom you need to make an espresso <laughs> chocolate, chocolate dipped yeah. dipped in chocolate. That would be heaven. Oh, yeah. That is I really so good. Like that's that. all I would be eating. Oh, oh my god. It's already so <laughs> hard for me not to break <laughs> my diet when I see the cream puffs oh, and yeah. everything else that we have. Yeah. And the Yeah, that must one. have been hard for you to go uh, you know, full keto. With a mother that can make pastries all like that. Oh yeah. Keto. Are you the only one in the family doing the keto bit? Yes, I'm no, the only wow, one. Wow, that must have been hard. Mm -hmm. But I love it. I mean, I feel so What was so your main reason for going, if I may I ask? Just, yeah, of course. So there are the macchiatos. And then we'll move these for you guys. Okay. And then, ooh, Smoky how pretty is that? We have to share on camera here yes, how pretty those are. They're beautiful. Yours is just picture oh, perfect. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, right? Thank you so much. 
Thank you. So look. if you guys can see that. Mm, can you, there you go. Look at that with that little crema rim right around the foam, you guys. Oh, how beautiful is that? That's what you see in the movies. That's the one where the person's over on the side making a million of them just to get the right one. Mm -hmm. That is just and beautiful. And this is where you can use your spoon and mix them. Ah, okay. So let's mix ours. I, ooh, love it. Oh, look at this. I know. And mm. the milk isn't burnt. It's perfectly frothed. Yep, it is. High temperature and everything. Now I want a copper um, yeah, I know, espresso right? machine. <laughs> We don't have to sleep ever, Harry. We can just have espresso the whole day. I have people that are on vacation Ooh. that call me and yell at me and say, you've ruined me with <laughs> you've coffee. You've ruined me with Thank coffee. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm like, I'm sorry. Ooh. They've gone over to like Italy or, or yeah. France or someplace and they're tasting it and going, mm. Oh yeah, taste that. Mm -hmm. And that amount of milk, it's tiny. It's not going to mm. break keto no. or anything like no. that. It's, no. it's just that foam mm -hmm. that you mix. Mm. Okay. What do you say? Mm. You can just say cheers. 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 Mm -hmm. mm. If this was alcohol in Serbian, I'd be teaching you to say živeli. 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 Okay. What is that? It means uh, like long live. Okay. okay. Essentially cheers, but I like that. I like yeah. Yeah. Love it. And hey, this would be good with some whiskey in it. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset with that. Uh -huh. That's great. Mm. That's my favorite drink. This All is, is this whiskey. One? Yeah, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, I love it. Whiskey snob here. Yeah. But you guys, this is my favorite way. Oh, isn't that This great? is my favorite that way. Is so yeah. This, this, this is oh, my favorite oh. way. If you haven't had this or haven't tried this and you're a coffee person, or you've got to you've, you've gotta give yourself that pleasure and yes. try this. Out. But you have to go to a good place. Yeah, yeah you can't just go yeah. to some fly If you come yeah. to Arizona, you have to come to Memento and Chandler. If you're staying down in Scottsdale, it's just right up the freeway, right up the I-10 freeway, you guys. And I know it might look weird, but we are in an industrial area for the fact that we roast, so we always have to be in line industrial. Right, mm -hmm. and that makes sense, but I bet you get the lunch crowd like crazy in here. We do, yeah. Yes. And, oh, yeah. and the more and that they find so out nice. about you, and you've only been here, what, a while? So we've been, um, the coffee shop was open in late March, okay. so this has been here not even a whole year. Like I have to. Brand, brand new, I right? have to get every little piece of so, this. So, do you have another store? No. So we used to be in Tempe, and then we moved to Chandler. Okay. Because we found the building of our dreams. So, well, sure. that's what you need to do. Follow your dreams, and you guys have. And this has just been absolutely fascinating to me. Thank you. I love the whole process. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much for sharing everything with me. I know you have to get every little dream. Oh, yeah, I'm, it all, yeah, I'm, not it I'm so glad. This is my favorite. This is my most favorite way. Yeah. Of making this it, is, and this yeah. was the macchiato. Yes, this is a that's real a macchiato. That's a real macchiato. I'm that is my mm. favorite. So, you have to get the glasses. Well, I can do that. You got to get the cups, you got to get ceramic the, double walled because that's what okay. holds the heat in. Okay, okay. so okay. you want ceramic double walled mm -hmm. espresso cups, yes. or yeah, and then you so can use that for your macchiato, yes, yeah, and your espresso, yes. I like that. So yeah, because it's hot. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean so that cup is hot. double wall that's supposed to be ceramic, so that yep. way it actually keeps the heat. If okay. you serve it in anything else, it's, it just yeah, dissipates. dissipates yes. I love hot, my coffee hot or my coffee iced. I don't yeah, like don't, I don't like I'm not a tepid in between and usually it's because it gets acidic. Yes. Yep. And bitter mm -hmm. when it sits there. But like you said, your coffee does not do that. No, and it's never supposed to be like that. And right. That's why we have such a simple menu because I want to teach people what good coffee is and that you don't need to put a lot of sugar or, any, or anything in it. You can actually enjoy it. Right. And you guys, with your fasting, with your fasting windows for autophagy, you can have black coffee. This is the way to go. You don't need the sweeteners. You don't need the skinny syrups. You don't need the no, stevia drops the like I do syrup. because this coffee does not need it. It is absolutely it's, it's delicious. Great. It's on its own. So, yeah. thank you so much, Nina, for sharing everything with us. We really so enjoyed this. So, is there this. anything we need to know about the ordering? If they were to order, Nothing, just um, it'll, it's all on the website, yeah, I would imagine. And right? we can even do curbside pickup. 
Okay. Oh, and nice. if you live in Arizona, we can do curbside pickup for you, and I text you when your order is ready, and everything is made specially for you. So it's always fresh. We roast multiple times a week. And that's the nice thing you guys saw on the website. The only way it would be out of stock is if the beans were over in South America, Guatemala, yes. or places mm -hmm. like that. Because they make it fresh, they make it small batch, so you get the freshest, best blended roast mm -hmm. possible. So exactly. that's exciting. Well, thank you so much. Thank this you. was fun. Was I learned a lot. Yeah, me too. I love yeah. this. Yeah, this was. Do you like another? That's really yeah. good. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, I, I, yeah, I, I, if I can I'm not going to say oh, no to that. We're not saying no. Yay! We'll see you guys in the next segment, but we're gonna sit and enjoy this. We may be up all night, but we're gonna enjoy it. Yes, indeed.